sense of purpose and mission. You know, what are we here for? What's our purpose? <coughs> Why do I have to work hard? Why should I be bothered? Challenge. I think teachers thrive on challenge. I, mean, I think we have to look at what we can do this better. They're not just being told to do things. It's really powerful. Growth people need to know that they've got somewhere they can go, where they're going to improve. Um, it's a selling point for all schools to have an outstanding CPD environment. Being recognised, people, and it's not about pay. It's about being recognised for who, the work you do being valued. So recognition is really important. Yeah, that's really interesting. Taking an interest in what someone's doing is a lot more powerful than paying them more. I mean, I'd, I'd say, as a head teacher, that's absolutely true, uh, in my experience, in terms of the extent to which my staff feel motivated. I can't pay, pay them any more anyway, because um, that's there's only so much money. And, um, you know, we've already talked about our, our non-PRP, PRP policy, because we don't, basically don't believe in it. And, um, you know, whatever Dominic Collins has to say, it's actually against the law not to have it. Um, so you, you have to, but we, we pretend to in my school. And, and, <laughs> and care, you know, looking after people. These things matter, you know, somebody, when somebody goes down, you know, someone's child is sick or whatever it is, so they're the way that you look after them. These, these, these things matter, and this is, for some people that's kind of just horrible, kind of trite stuff, which has got nothing to do with, you know, direct instruction methodology or something, but actually, you can't talk about those things unless those things are in place. You need those things in place. You need to share values and language. Now, this is out of my school's one. This is a staff group about four or five years ago. We ripped up the 13-page teaching and learning policy, and we just made that. And initially, it had paragraphs, but then we realised that no one ever reads the paragraphs. We're just stuck with the headings. <laughs> and we also thought that if you don't know what it means from the headings, then what's the point? So well, this is our, and this is good. It came from a group of staff, and that's become our shared language. We talk about rigour and scholarship at my school, and we're very, it sort of wasn't done on purpose, but we like the fact that personal learning journey, which is our theme uh, in the current year, um, last year, we, we sort of profile them in, in each year to sort of give them a bit of push. Rigor and scholarship, personal learning journey, and it's on the same thing as time to reflect and enjoy. And we want the, the students to have that space to enjoy the learning. So this is a shared language. And if you if you have something like this, you need to use it, or else there's no point. So we, we bring this up a lot. We use it in our our documents, and we think it's you know, it works for us. But you know, it's just a way of having a language we use in our setting. It helps. Them. This is a this is a cent centerpiece of, of kind of what I think helps us have the, the culture that we've got, and it's a thing we've developed over the last two years, where we now have what we call departmental review, and it, replace, it basically replaces uh, lesson all our lesson observations, lesson grading, all of that feeds into this process. And essentially, what it does is it's, it develops a sort of intelligent, sensitive, multifaceted accountability thing where you're looking at books, looking at assessment data, public exam results, <coughs> lesson observations, CPD engagement, student feedback, come on, pretty much everything you know about how well you're doing feeds into this overarching assessment of is this department doing well and the people in it. And it's individual and it's collective. So we, we share, we feed back to, on lessons to everyone in the department, but then we have a, a meeting where we talk about everybody's lessons with the team together, um, and the heads of the department and the senior leader do half each. So that they, and what we've done is we've done the same departments for three years solidly. So that now, well, literally there are some departments where I, I would, if I was staying at my school, I'd be changing them because I know them so well. I, I, I was talking to a teacher earlier this week saying, I, could, I haven't observed you, I need to do an observation, but I almost, I almost feel what's the point because I know I'm going to see, I know you so well, I know you. I know that you're a great teacher. I, I don't need to observe you to hold you to account. I know all these other things about you. And however good or bad your lesson is, till next week, won't make any difference to that. And that, that is knowing your staff. Knowing your staff properly, not just popping in and going Ch -ch -ch, and seeing something good or bad, or is it good or bad, or whatever. You need to have a sensitive, intelligent, rounded, complicated picture of performance. And that's what our departmental review is doing. And so lesson grades and stuff like that 
have just been have gone out the window. And, you, and it's it's complicated. Sometimes we, we don't know. Yeah, is that as good as it could be? What could be better? So we're constantly asking this question. So our, fundamentally, our, our accountability system has got to be complicated, rounded, and no one lesson. And this thing of PRP policy, we have to get three less observations and at least two goods. And it's just it's just appalling. Mm -hmm. So professional culture needs to be to fuel the, the research engaged aspect. I better crack on. Um, so we've got performance review, which is important. Um, so in our performance review cycle every year, what happens is that we it's led by the member of staff. The most important conversation is, you know, what are you going to be doing this year? Which is going to get you excited that you're working on, that you're improving, and it's not about, um, you know, whether or not your class in year 11 were eight percent above target, or whatever. That we just don't have those conversations in that same way. I think we need to focus on input as well as outcomes. So I'm more concerned about a teacher who's a bit passive aggressive and sulks in the department meeting than I am about whether or not their exam class results were as, as good as they should be. I, I, I am very concerned about that. So behaviours, I think, are important. Engagement with CPD, as I say, is a bottom line. Um, and no matter what your CPD is per se, you've got to be doing it. And I'm interested in what, what it is. But I don't, I'm not going to tell you what it is, what to do, but I'm, you need to be doing stuff. And mostly we've moved away completely from any whole staff CPD apart from things to do with things like um, using echo pens and child protection. Anything to do with teaching learning. Because there's never a single event where we're preaching to the staff about <coughs> what you should know. Never happens. It's all workshops, options, do this. Most of our CPD days are run by heads of department and optional time, you know, time to do whatever you need. And that's really refreshing. The staff value that hugely. We also have more than your average number of insert days because we just decided we should have them. And so far, no one's told us we can't. <laughs> um, CPD should have this idea. I like this idea of it being for mastery and for innovation. If it's all about newness, you're losing the fact that a lot of CPD is about grinding out stuff and, and doing more obvious things better and evaluating the things you're more. <coughs> But people also need to try things out. So we talk about this double strand CPD. Now what I'm doing this, I'll talk about this more in a minute, but sometimes when people do projects, often you find they're doing two. They only have to, everyone has to do one. But sometimes they do two. One of them is the kind of grinding out, getting better thing. The other one is this kind of new gizmo or thing they're trying. And, and they, everybody uh, thrives on having both. Individual and collective. I think this is powerful. Now, people in teams, it's one of my favourite Didion William you know, quotes is when he says people shouldn't just work in a team, they should work as a team. And I think that's very powerful. He's talking about in relationship <coughs> monitoring student achievement. You know, the, 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 the maths department's results are a shared responsibility. They're not each individual teacher being accountable for their class. It's like, your results matter to me as much as my own class's results. And it's thinking through that. And it's the same with CPD. Working together on something is very you know, enriching and important because you're questioning each other. But at the same time, different teachers have different needs. You know, might have quite different skill sets that you're working with. So thinking about CPD for teams as well as individuals is useful. And finally, to include all these things, I think Linda has mentioned earlier, this, the, 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 the idea that once you've done your, your three years induction, you're sorted on behaviour. Well, I don't think that's true. I mean, I think a lot of teachers are quietly struggling all the time. And there's not enough option you know, on the CPD calendar for that. I, I think that's hard to crack. It's hard to sort of nominate yourself for the crisis behaviour management session. And you have to create an environment where that's kind of normalised. I think we struggle with that in my school. But that's something I think we need to be doing more of. All these things matter, and subject knowledge. I'll come to this in a minute, but one of the, one of the examples that I'm going to show you is where the, a department has worked on the subject knowledge with good effect. So, we've got that, those are the sort of prerequisites, I think, this idea that you have shared, a shared language, an evaluative and intelligent, intelligent accountability framework, and a good professional culture. On our sign outside my school, it says, we're a research-engaged learning community. I inherited that, that, that was just a, a label. It was a label before it was true, and I think that's fine, because you're creating a symbol, it's basically a statement of intent. What it should say is in brackets, we want to be a research <laughs> We are heading on the journey towards being, but that's obviously implicit. Uh, Public, we say we are a research engagement in the community, but it's a good thing to have on your side, that's 
That's why right outside, and that's you know, the most of the about the school. <coughs> Two things about that. First of all, engaging with research. You know, we use this to <coughs> Research comes at us, but there are not many teachers in any one school who are really reading research. It, you need somebody who is. Now, there are a couple of, there are about three or four people in my school who are kind of organic Twitter freaks, engaging this stuff, reading the books. And they're not Twitter freaks all. Some of them are academic freaks. They read journals, and they've done their masters and their PhD at Cambridge Education Department, and they, 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 they read journals. But you need people who are the champions the pedagogy champions of people. You need the people that are going to come into your staff room and say, wow, have you read this? We've been doing this wrong. You know, or um, will actually share the latest sort of David Didan challenge saying everything you know that you know is wrong. <laughs> you need people who will say, this is an idea, you didn't know about this. You know, people in your school does that. A lot of reasons, not enough schools have the people who are bringing this in, engaging with the research. Why do you keep saying that? The research says that's not true. You need someone to be a challenger. And I think if you don't have a challenger, you need to appoint somebody. If I was the head and I didn't have this in my school already, I'd be saying, I want you to be the challenger. I want you to get on Twitter, get on the, on the blogosphere, read it, and you tell us if we're saying stuff which is rubbish. Because you need somebody to be telling you that. Yesterday I went to a thing where someone said that they, their, um, their, their lesson observations um, were 85.32% good or better. <laughs> <laughs> and that was based on 56 lesson observations. We do rounding and accuracy at GCSE physics, and you know, that was just, you know, that's a sort of, come on, the decimal places thing there. It's just extraordinary. But if you don't know about that, who's going to challenge you? You need someone friendly to say, you know what, that second decimal place, even the first one, garbage. <laughs> Books. We just made this fab CPD library. I was 